So, Baba, greetings, gentle sentience. Last Outrider here with a very special Eldar video. Eldar players, get ready to have your world shaken because I am going to tell you about the rebirth. We had the fall, but now you shall see the Eldar reborn. Not just as a theory, but as written down in the Codex in the final act. In recent years, the Harlequin's war against chaos has been characterized by a newfound urgency. Full masks have become an ever more common sight amongst the stars. Appearing from Webway, they can be found performing within the realms of their own kin, or battling the galaxy's desperate races in vicious campaigns of apparently random violence. As the 41st millennium comes to a close, more and more Eldar vanish into the webway, forsaking their former lives to take up the Harlequin's mask. The Harlequin's numbers are growing, and many amongst the Eldar wonder why. The truth is as inspirational as it is terrifying. At the very heart of the Black Library, there lies a silver-lit vault. Within it stands a plinth made of finely graven obstinite, upon which rests a crystalline book said to contain the words of Kagarath himself. Since the fall, the tome's covers have remained closed, sealed shut with flickering chains of light. Yet now, long-awaited portents have come to pass. A fallen sorcerer seeks the lore of the library. A king stirs in his court of death and silence, preparing to rise once more. Within the eye of madness, a champion of the ruinous powers prepares to seize a realm long denied. As the signs have come to pass, so too have the bands of light on the tome flickered and died, one by one. Now at last, the tome itself has fallen open. Within its pages, the shadow seers have found a script. A secret final finale that changes utterly the tale of the Eldar Fall. Pinned in inks of light and shadow, these words present a slender hope, detailing an intricate, galaxy-spanning performance with a battle known to the Eldar as the Rahana Dandra. Yet, within the pages of the Crystal Tome is recorded Kagorath's ultimate jest, a way to trick Slanesh, she who thirsts into expending all of her power, not to destroy the Eldar, but to save them. The Eldar, how much, how, sorry, such an impossibility could come to pass is unclear. For on this matter, the finale is infuriatingly vague. Yet the Eldar take their God's worth word on faith alone, for their devotion to Gagarath is total and his methods beyond question or reproach. Thus they have begun the steps of this final dance, this final act that will see it completed or else face absolute destruction in its attempt. Ha ha ha! Well, let me give you my observations on a few aspects of this finale. First, three, I mean two of the portents that made the book fall open 
are obviously tied to the Imperium. One, a hidden sorcerer, a fallen sorcerer, looks for the library. I believe that is obviously Ariman from the Thousand Suns. Two, well, do I need to say a champion of the ruinous powers seeks a long denied realm? This is obviously somebody in the um, Eye of Terror, you know, because it could be one of the fallen Primarchs. I'm not going to say it has to be Black Legion or anything like that. Everybody thinks that it is, but there's, there's three demon Primarchs. For all we know, it could be Angron. I mean, come on. Sorry, back. And finally, what's the third portent? Oh, yes. At first, I thought that was the emperor. At first, I thought it was three. Oh, the king stirs. And, oh, look, the emperor is going to get up. No, no, it's not. It's quite obviously the Necrons. The king stirs in his court of death and silence. That is a reference to the silent king. So, how do I see this playing out? Pay attention to this video, because this is my prediction. They're going to go down the right of uh, the road of combining Dune, Frank Herbert's Dune, and J.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, in which the free peoples uh, are represented in this case by the non-chaos peoples, are going to come together in a final battle that has been orchestrated the entire time over a 60 million year period by the being known as the Emperor, okay, to defeat chaos once again. And who's it going to be? Yes, chaos, as everybody understands, you can't defeat chaos. Well, you can kick it out of the galaxy, which is good enough. And you can create technology, which no longer needs to travel through the warp. You combine these two things, and chaos is functionally defeated in the real galaxy. So how would we do this? Simple. Let's bring together all the forces that aren't chaos in the game and have them fight chaos, which is an insane amount of power. Let's look. You're talking about all of the Eldar. That means the Dark Eldar, the Craft World, the Exodites, and the Harlequin. All coming together as one group to fight chaos. Next, um, you're going to talk about the Imperium all coming together. And including the rebirth of the, of the Primarchs. All coming together to fight chaos. Those are two big players right there. But let's add to that all of the Necron. Wake up! And when the Silent King, which we already know regret his actions, looks around and sees the, uni the galaxy about to be taken over by chaos? Are you kidding me? You think they're just going to let that happen? You think he's not going to look at that and say, no, this is our galaxy, okay? You, 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 don't, you don't get to have it. You're not taking over. You're not taking over Necron space. No, get out of here. So you got, wow. All of the Necrons under the Silent King are going to be unified to fight Chaos. And I believe that the Tyranids, if you've watched my video, uh, are made by the Old Ones, returning uh, to build their numbers again to fight the Necron on the final battle as well, the Rahana Dandra. So who else? The Tau are obviously going to fight the Necron. I don't think they're going to turn to Chaos. And the Orcs are just going to fight. They don't need a freaking reason. All you need to do is say, fight chaos. Just Grasgull, Mag Uruk Grasgull, is going to unite the orcs to fight against chaos because he's obviously intelligent enough to know, nope, we're not going to join chaos, so we're going to fight chaos, and it's going to be a fantastic battle. And those two sides, they're going to team up on, um, where? The, the Endless Wag on Golgoroth? Wherever that planet is happening on. This is all going to come together. And what is going to be the purpose of that final battle? Well, as it says there, Slanesh is going to basically uh, implode. Expend all of her power not to destroy the Eldar, 
but to save them. And I will tell you how that seemingly impossible thing could happen. It's very easy. What does Slanesh represent? Appetite. Consumption. Meeting one's desires. Whatever you desire, just take it to the ex insane extreme. Well, let's think about this. What does Slanesh desire the most? What, is she, what does she consume the most of? The Eldar. Well, that leaves you with this realization that if Slanesh destroyed the Eldar, then Slanesh would have nothing to consume anymore. Nothing. No purpose to even existence. So at some point in time, it's going to have to realize that if the other chaos powers come into the galaxy, you see, they all have other things. Oh, Korn has violence, and and uh, Zinch is hope, and and all of the Nur Nurgle's decay. These things all aren't tied to a single species; they're just generalized things. But Slanesh is tied to the Eldar specifically. Not just desires, desires the Eldar. And if they're destroyed, then its purpose is lost. So, so suddenly it just realizes, fuck it. The last act of Slanesh is to perpetuate the Eldar, what it wants to consume, so that its reason to exist never disappears. That's how I see that impossible thing happening. Now, somehow the emperor in this book, because I believe Kagorath is the emperor, they will, some agreement with, I, I don't know, somehow they're going to get Slanesh to do that. That's the, the golden thread that has been traveling throughout all of this. Because while the emperor is human, it does not mean that the emperor is stuck at a fixed point in time of humanity. He obviously has been traveling around temporally throughout the lifespan of the galaxy, putting his plan in place, not just during the time of humanity, but before humanity and after humanity. He's not just limited to the existence of humanity, and I believe that he went back and became Kagarath amongst the Eldar, and created this plan along with humanity, and it all wraps up together, probably on Armageddon, where instead of an end, and that's the big thing that they're saying here, instead of 40K being the end of everything, which is what it's been for the last 25 years, it's going to be the beginning. And you know what? The really cool thing is, we might come full circle. What do you mean? If you've watched my videos on Rogue Trader, you know, the original Imperium, the original 40K, that could be the beginning of the next cycle of 40K. They could have come full circle, 25 years. You go down all this fluff, all this path, and then after the fall, after the destruction, after the Rahana Dandra, then we have a galaxy as it's presented in Rogue Trader First Edition. I could see that happening. That, that's when humanity becomes the psychic race that the Emperor's always been trying to uh, bring about. Sorry! That's my tirade. I just needed to get it all out in detail so that if this comes to pass, you know I said it first here. Until next time! Bye! Mm-hmm.